Hi, this is section 6.5, and in this video, we will be solving absolute value equations. Um, I think this, this stuff for this solving absolute value equations is fairly easy to do, but with that said, there's a couple things we have to be careful about. And so we're going to start on page 390, and we're going to review what absolute value is first of all. Okay? So on page 390, to solve an absolute value equation, we need to know, again, or remind ourselves what absolute value is. We already covered absolute value earlier this year. Absolute value is how far a number is away from zero on a number line. Absolute value is always a positive amount. Distance is always a positive. Okay, so I hope that rings a bell. We went through absolute values. I believe it was chapter 2. I guess I could... I'm going to pause the video real quick and just double check that. Yes, it was, it was chapter 2. It was on page 66. So that would have been in September. We went through what absolute value was. And I know that's something you would have learned probably in at, at least by 8th grade, you would have went through what an absolute value is. So again, absolute value is just how far a number is away from zero. It's always a positive amount. Now, the symbol for absolute value, remember, it's these bars. Now, I use blue. I wanted to color this to make it clear. When you have these two vertical lines or bars around a number, those bars are representing absolute value. In other words, this is saying how far is the number, negative 7, away from 0, okay? So that's, again, what that means. So the absolute value of negative 7, remember, would be positive 7. The absolute value, on the other hand, of positive 7 would still be positive 7, okay? So I'm having a little bit of problems with my pen here. I better freeze this one more. I don't know why. I was just having issues with my pen, and I didn't want the video running when that was going on. So anyway, remember, the absolute value of 7 is asking you how far is this away from, se from 0. It's still 7 away. So it doesn't matter if I take the absolute value of 7 or negative 7. In each case, these numbers are 7 away from 0. So with that in mind, let's talk about an absolute value equation. So here I have an equation, the absolute value of x equals 10. So let's think about it. What could I plug in here that would be 10 units away from 0? Well, obviously, the number one answer someone is, would say is, well, if you plug in 10, 10 is 10 away from 0. So the absolute value of x, x could be 10 but it could also be negative 10, okay? There's actually two answers to this. If you plug in negative 10, is it negative 10, 10 units away from zero also? So when you have absolute values and you have an absolute value equation, it gives you two different solutions. Positive 10 would work because the absolute value of positive 10 is 10, but the absolute value of negative 10 is also 10. So you would get two solutions. Now, how does that play out? How does that play out? Let me erase this because I'd like to actually work this out with you. And it's not letting me erase that. Let me check here. Hmm. I'm not sure why this is not letting me. Well, if it doesn't let me erase it, I guess I won't. Okay. Um, I have an equation. 4n minus 5 equals 18. By the way, I'm on page 393 right now. Maybe I'll just write that in here. We're on page 393, question 10. Now, 4n minus 5 is equal to 18. Now, remember, this here can work out to 18 because let's think for a minute off to the side. Isn't the absolute value of 18 going to give me 18? So if this works out to 18, if 4n minus 5 equals 18, this will be true. But also, remember, doesn't the absolute value of negative 18 give me 18? So this could work out to negative 18 also. So when you have absolute value equations, it's actually going to force you to solve two different equations. I've got to figure out what happens when 4n minus 5 is 18, because 18 is a possibility for this to equal 18, or 
4n minus 5 could equal negative 18. I've got to solve two equations. So I think that part would be easy. In each case here, we're going to add 5 to each side, which is going to give me 4n equals 23 for this equation. Now over here, I'm going to get 4n equals negative 13. And then I'll divide each side by 4. I'm going to get two solutions. I'm going to get 5 and 3 quarter, and I'm going to get n equals negative 3 and a quarter. I can obviously check each of these. I can take 4 times 5 and 3 quarter and then subtract 5. The absolute value of that should equal 18. And I'm also going to take 4 times negative 3 and a quarter, plug it in, subtract 5, and the absolute value of that should equal 18. Okay? You might want to pause the video right now and try that. Take, remember, this is 5.75. Plug in 4 times 5.75 minus 5 and see what you get. And then, remember, this is negative 3.25. Take 4 times negative 3.25 minus 5 and then take the absolute value of all that and see if it equals 18. Okay. Here's another problem. Number 12. Same page. Q plus 8 equal 2. Well, remember, I'm going to get two equations because this can work out to positive 2. Remember, if, uh, if I work this out to positive 2, absolute value of positive 2 is 2, or this could work out to negative 2 because the absolute value of negative 2 is also equal to 2. So I've got to solve two different equations. I've got to solve q plus 8 equals 2, but I also have to solve q plus 8 could equal negative 2. This amount in here could be negative 2 because the absolute value of negative 2, remember, would work out to that positive 2 that I want. So I can quickly take away 8 from each side in each equation, and I'm going to get two solutions, q equals negative 6 and q equals negative 10, and remember, check it. Now, this would be an easy one to check. If you take negative 6 and plug it in up here, isn't negative 6 plus 8 2? And isn't the absolute value of 2 2? So that works. Let's try negative 10. Negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2, and isn't the absolute value of negative 2 2? Well, it is. That works. So in each case, remember the two equations, I get two solutions. Each of these solutions, when I take the absolute value, would equal 2. All right. Let's go to 15. Now, I picked 15 for a reason. I got a real important thing to say. All right. We got to be very careful on a problem like 15, and here's why. We, all year long, let me do an equation up here in blue. We've seen things like this, but we've seen them with parentheses. Okay, we've seen equations like this and solved those all year long with parentheses. And of course, when you have parentheses, the first thing you're probably, as you're sitting there, the first thing you're probably thinking of as you're sitting here watching this video is you're thinking, well, hey, distribute. Okay, distribute this. Okay, so I'm going to say when we have absolute values, don't distribute. That, that can screw things up if we, ab if we distribute through absolute values. We don't want to do that. Okay? What we want to do when you have an absolute value and we have things being multiplied or added outside the absolute value, the first step when we have an absolute value, the first step is to get the absolute value isolated on one side. Let's put that down. Get the absolute value isolated on one side of the equation. We want to do that first. We want to get that absolute value by itself. Okay, so when I look at this, I'm, I'm looking and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. The absolute value is not isolated. I got this times 3 here that I do not want. I want the absolute value by itself. So how do you get rid of times 3? And I know, I, I hope I've pounded this into your head all year. The inverse of times 3 is to divide by 3. So what we want to do, we want to get that absolute value isolated on one side. We're going to divide each side by 3 which is going to cause those times 3 divided by 3 to cancel. And now this is just like the other problems that I had just previously talked about in the video. Okay? 
the absolute value equals 5. So remember, as we're thinking again, positive 5 could work because the absolute value of 5 is 5, but negative 5 could also work. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So we, either way, 5 or negative 5, there's two different equations I have to solve. I've got to figure out what happens when I have 13 minus 2t equaling 5, or what happens when I have 13 minus 2t equaling that negative 5, because remember, absolute value negative 5 is 5. So now from here it should be pretty basic. Take away 13 in each case, which on this case I'd have negative 2t equals negative 8, and I can divide by negative 2 as you see, and I get t equals 4. In this case, when I took away negative 13, I got negative 2t equals negative 18. I still got to divide each side by negative 2. t equals 9. Remember, it's always a good idea. Check it at the end. I'll check one of these. Let's try 9. If I plug in a 9 here, 13 minus 2 times 9 is 18. 13 minus 18 is negative 5. What's the absolute value of negative 5? You're probably coming up with 5. Well, 5 times 3 did give me 15. 9 checked out. You know, you can check. You can pause the video and check 4. Let's do another one. Look at 23. Start off. Is the absolute value by itself? And I'll just circle this in green. No, it's not. It is not by itself because we have this plus 5 here. I do not want the plus 5 here. I want to isolate that absolute value before I do anything else. Okay? So let me just get rid of that. So I want to get rid of this plus 5. So, of course, we'll take away 5. That isolates the absolute value. Now, there's one other thing I need to, to talk about here with absolute values. Like other equations, remember, absolute values are some things that can happen. I've, in my previous problems, we had two solutions. It's also possible for absolute values to have no solution. Here's a case where the absolute value is going to have no solution. Think about this. Forget about the x minus 1 right now. Just think. What number, if, if x minus 1 worked out to a number, what number, when I take the absolute value, can actually equal negative 3? I hope what I said just made sense there. Can I have any kind of number inside of an absolute value that when you check the absolute value of that number, it can work out to a negative? Remember, absolute value means that we are finding out that distance of that number away from zero. Okay? Well, absolute values can't equal negatives. So in this case, the ab this is impossible. I cannot get any number in here that when I take its absolute value is going to work out to negative 3. This would be one of those cases where we're going to have no solution. This is going to be one of those cases we get no solution. Okay? Moving on. Here's one more. I want to solve, I want to solve here for B. I have to get the absolute value by itself before I do anything. So I've got to get rid of the times 4, and I've got to get rid of the minus 7. So, of course, the first step, I'll add 7, which will give me 4 times the absolute value of b minus 1 equals 24. I'm going to divide each side by 4. Now the absolute value is by itself. This is going to give me two equations because this stuff in here can work out to positive 6 or remember if this in here works out to negative 6, the absolute value of negative 6 is still 6. So I've got to solve each equation. So b minus 1 could equal 6 or b minus 1 could equal negative 6. So of course we could add 1 here and here, b equals 7. I could add 1 here and here, b equals negative 5. Also want to talk about absolute deviation today. Absolute deviation. Absolute deviation, it's a little, um, I guess, it's an error tolerance is what I would call it. It's on page 392. When you think about an error tolerance, I'm talking about, uh, think about Cedar Point. Most of you have been to Cedar Point. There's rides and you see rides there where they have a little measuring stick where you at least have to be so tall to get on the ride. However, if you're too tall, you can't get on the ride either. 
that's kind of what absolute deviation is about. It's, it's a little formula that gives you how far can you be off either way and still be acceptable. Okay? Um, trying to think of like wrestling would be a good example of that. The weight classes. They have weight classes. If you're too high over that weight, you move into a different class. On the other hand, if you're too low, you move into a class below. Okay? So absolute deviation in the book, you'll see it says on page 392, it equals X minus the original amount or given amount. Um, the given amount, I always just think of the target amount, the original amount, the target amount, and absolute deviation is like a margin of error. Okay, so for example, if you look at, I'm trying to see, trying to see here just one second. I want to use an example that we can actually follow in the book, so I think I'm just going to, I don't know if it will let me erase this, and it won't. I'll get rid of that. Okay, um, I'll just make up my own problem. Forget that. We'll just make up our own. If you look at question, let's say on page 393, number 34, okay? Number 34, it says the given value is 20 and the absolute deviation is 5. So the given value, let me try to make up a real problem for this. Let's say that you have a pair of jeans that you want to buy and the given value is 20, meaning the target amount, you want to find a pair of jeans for 20 bucks. That's the target amount. That's what the given value of 20 means. I'm looking for a $20 pair of jeans. Okay, now, margin of error, absolute deviation is 5 in number 34. Here's what that means. While I'm targeting a $20 pair of jeans, I'm willing to pay $5 over that amount or $5 less than a, that amount to buy this pair of jeans. This little formula will tell me the high amount and low amounts of that pair of jeans. Now, when you think through what I just said, if your target is a $20 pair of jeans and the absolute deviation is 5, you're probably figuring out that your upper amount, if I'm willing to pay 5 more than that, I'd be willing to pay 25 bucks, and the low amount would be 15 This little formula just figures that out for you. So remember... I'm going to get two equations out of this. X minus 20 could equal 5. X minus 20 could equal negative 5. And look what happens when I solve these. If I add 20 to each side here, I get 25. And if I add 20 to each side here, you see I'm going to get 15. This little formula just helps me figure out that upper and lower amount. That's what absolute deviation means. So I hope my little example with a pair of jeans and going to the store worked. You're targeting a, you want to buy a $20 pair. You're looking, you're, you decided that $20 is going to give you a jean that's of the quality you want. So you're willing to pay $5 over that amount or $5 less than that amount, and you feel like if you do that, you'll get a pair of jeans that's worth or uh, is of the quality you want. Well, this little formula would help you find that upper and lower limit. So in other words, you'll pay anywhere from $15 to $25 to get this pair of jeans. Now, you're hoping for 20 but you'll go either way on that, okay? I hope that made sense. I'm just going to quickly show you a few more examples this is number 17. I just wanted you to see a couple more. Um, Got to get the absolute value by itself. Took away three from each side. I divide each side by a third. Remember, once I get to here, I'm not going to finish this one up, but once you get to here, we got to write two equations. 2c minus 5 could equal 12, or 2c minus 5 could equal negative 12, and you have to solve these. I think I'll stop there, okay? So I didn't want to make this video overly long. I will stop it here. We can go over questions you have in class on our next day of class.